Baseball in the Burrows is brought to you by Verizon. The Yankees should and probably could use this all-star break to figure out what the heck is going on and how they can get their juice back. So let's talk Bronx Bombers with New York Post sports columnist Mike Vaccaro. Uh, Mike, talk these fans off the ledge, please, because uh, this team suffered probably the most gut-wrenching loss of the year on Sunday, and that's heading into the All-Star break. So the first half of their season has been a complete roller coaster of emotions. So take us to school here, man. How would you rank or grade the Yankees' first half? Look, they were three outs away from being in first place at the All-Star break. I, I don't think you can be in full panic mode when you realize that. Now, understandably, this is a tough loss to have to sit on for four days because there's no games till, till Friday. But Look, it's, 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 it's been a team that has been extraordinary for long stretches of the season and has been abysmal for a shorter stretch of the season. Uh, and, and you have to figure that this, that this lands them somewhere in between, and that should be good enough to get into the playoffs. To me, uh, the last couple of months of the season, they're all about playing their best at the end of September, heading into October. We've learned that lesson continually the last couple of years in baseball. You know, Don't worry about winning 110 games in the regular season. Worry about winning and playing well enough at the end of September to beginning of October so you can get in one of the kind of runs that the Phillies have got on the last couple of years, the Diamondbacks and the Rangers both got on last year. That's the key to success ultimately in baseball because that's really all that people are going to count on is what happens in October. If they do what they could, you know, if they get in that kind of run in October, no one's going to remember this game. It'll be a funny footnote. There's a lot of fans that can't think to or, or, or grasp October right now, especially after that loss and four days in New York after a loss like that gives sports media and the fans a chance to play the blame game for the uh, bad play in the last month. This team is looking like they've kind of lost its juice for a little bit. So is that on the players or is that on the coaches? I do think that there's been some uh, some, some, some problems in terms of the concentration level of the, of the players, mm. whether you want to hustle, whether you want to call it execution. Uh, but look, that, that, that really reached a peak, I think, uh, maybe seven or ten days ago, uh, where there was a couple of games in a row where there were a couple of incidents that really made you wonder if uh, Aaron Boone wasn't losing the team. But I do think they've kind of you know, sharpened up in the last week. Now, I realize that's not necessarily reflected in the record. They lost two out of three in Tampa, and then they obviously lost on Sunday, so they didn't get their sweep in Baltimore. But I do think they're playing incrementally better. Uh, you know, you look around, they're not just a two-man offense anymore, which has got to be encouraging. Uh, or at least they haven't been the last couple of games. And uh, to me, those are all the things you take as positives into the break. But obviously those things have to sharpen up. I mean, the, 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 it's, it's a bad look when, 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 when players don't execute because of lack of hustle. Now, Sunday's problems had nothing to do with that. They were just miscues. Sadly, errors occurred to the best fielders in baseball. It just so happened they happened on back-to-back -back plays for the Yankees, and that cost them dearly. You mentioned some of the good, and uh, you mentioned Aaron Boone, or looking like Aaron Boone kind of maybe losing the locker room. He's, had, he's said that there's a lot of good in there when he's been talking about the recent losses. What does he see that we don't see, Mike? What's this team been doing well since they've been going through this funk that can give fans some confidence that they can turn it around again after the break? Well, he's not wrong either. I mean, there is a lot of good. Look, <laughs> They are 17 games over 500. They, you know, they they were 30 games over 500. Nobody gave them an easy path to get there, and the players in the locker room are the ones who built that. Now, look, have they been off the last month after their extraordinary level of the first couple of months? Of course they have. It's, you, you can't deny that. And is it, um, is it Boone's mission now to have to try and maximize what he has? That's exactly what his mission is. And if he doesn't, there'll be consequences for it. But uh, look, I mean, I, I, I think when you start with a one-two punch like Judge and Soto. Uh, you're, you're in a pretty good, pretty good place. I mean, the pitching staff has been above expectations for the most part until recently. Uh, you go with that as a strength. And then, look, the, the deadline is coming in a couple of weeks, and you have to figure that uh, Brian Cashman is going to fortify uh, what's already here and hopefully get them to a place where they're playing a lot better as August goes into September and as September goes into October. And that ultimately is what they'll be judged on. You mentioned that deadline, exactly 15 days away from this, the time we're shooting this interview. Uh, where can Brian Cashman upgrade the roster, or do they just keep the guys that they have now to try and make that run to get to October? Well, look, it would be wonderful if you get a more reliable everyday uh, bat in the lineup. They could really use that because there are times when that lineup seems to fall off a cliff after it gets done with uh, Soto and Judge. 
I think right now the real priority is the bullpen. The problem with that is that there's about 20 other teams who consider themselves playoff teams, all of whom think we have terrible bullpens, even those who have good bullpens. And, of course, the Yankees don't have to go much farther to look across town. And you see the Mets, who are obviously going to try and strengthen that part of it uh, in the second half. So uh, it's not going to be easy, but those are, the, you know, those are two elements that I think they really need to strengthen quickly. And you can really get this thing kind of turned around in a hurry if you do. Uh, you guys can go check out Mike's article on NewYorkPost.com slash sports. Mike, a lot of people clicking on that thing. Uh, glad that you hopped on with us to uh, talk us home, man. And uh, enjoy the All-Star break. Thanks, Brandon. You do the same. Thanks for having me on.